Hey everybody, call me Felix and recently we were able to travel from our home base in Ilocos Norte to Metro Manila for some grand food and travel adventures around the city as well as a few major tourist hotspots such as Boracay and Del Nido. If you haven't subscribed, you won't want to miss out on any new videos as we have plenty of them to share, so please subscribe. Our Epicurean tales around Metro Manila tended to revolve around some of the best fine dining establishments the Metro has to offer starting with our first night's dinner at Wa Yen Brasserie Chinoise inside the Hilton Manila Hotel within the Resorts World Manila Complex in Pasay. Wa Yen serves modern interpretations of Chinese cuisine with a particular emphasis on Shanghainese cuisine and therefore you can expect some excellent Xiaolong Bao and fried pork buns as we did. The restaurant prides itself as the only Shanghainese restaurant in the metro using high-quality ingredients without extenders or MSG. And like any luxurious Chinese restaurant worth its salt, Hua Yan sports an extensive and expensive list of Chinese wine and quality liquor. In the short time it has been opened in the relatively new Hilton Manila, Hua Yan has garnered major acclaim, including a slot on Tatler Philippines Best Restaurants for 2020. And I can definitely vouch for the quality of Hua Yan. As sitting here having covered a few more restaurants from that Tatler list, that first dinner at Hua Yan still ranks comfortably in the top two or three as one of the most impressive meals I've had on my recent foodie run. What follows in this video is a truly memorable meal from start to finish, punctuated by a few show-stopping dishes, namely the visual feast that is the Emperor's Flaming Crispy Chicken, stuffed with glutinous rice and pork one of Hua Yan's signature dishes that takes 40 minutes to prepare and is served tableside with a neat flambéing show. Keep watching till the end as there were plenty of standout dishes we raved about. And also, there's a little bonus review when I ordered a few dishes I had to pass up on at the restaurant, including a Shanghainese classic, tea smoked duck. So, without further ado, here's how our amazing Shanghainese feast at Hua Yan went down. Enjoy. Right, hey, Warren, when you first got off the bus in Manila, yeah, I, I, you spoke I, in Ilocano I spoke, first. I spoke Ilocano. Yeah, get driver. rid of that habit, Provinciano <laughs> boy. Um, That's weird. Yeah. So this, everybody, this is Warren's first day out of Ilocos Norte. Not yeah. only out of Ilocos Norte, in the jungle of Manila. What do you think about Manila so far? There's a lot of traffic. A lot of traffic, yeah. A lot of traffic. And, yeah, air pollution. Yeah. But what do you think of a place like this? Oh, it's kind of nice. Mm. Have better. you ever seen a Chinese restaurant this nice? I haven't seen this yet. <laughs> this place. No. Yeah. Well, I mean, of course we're gonna try the food and see if it's absolutely yeah. lives up. I really love the design though. It's like um I mean the, the the name gives it away. I mean Hua Yan Brasserie Chinois. It's modern almost French no interpretation like, of classic Chinese but, cuisine, right? But and no the like, decor you know, the Ch decor Chinese, reflects it. Like Chinese language, something like that. It's like no, it really feels Chinese and it feels French and it's very minimalistic too. Oh it's Yeah it feels Yeah, exactly. Uh, like Chin like Chinese European design, right? Oh, okay. Alright, Warren. I think it's time to toast to the end of 648 days yeah, of lockdown in Locos Norte. Some, yeah. Ben, some, get off your phone. Yeah, get off your phone, Ben. Okay. 648 days of lockdown in Locos Norte. And we're back in Manila eating Shanghainese food at Bayan Brasserie Chinoise at the Hilton Manila. Is it Hap Chan, right? No, it's Bayan. Oh, or Bayan. Yeah, it doesn't exactly. Yeah, it doesn't exactly rhyme with Hapchan, but here you go. So we're having a we double dragon blooming tea. So it's basically a green tea base with all kinds of flowers like marigold, amaranth, amaranth and jasmine tea. So here we go. Mm. I really like it. It's very gentle. Yeah, it's very gentle. Not, Not too floral. It's not too floral. Yeah. Yeah. Very gentle. So we should try the appetizer. And it's a complimentary appetizer here. This is a rice cake. 
basically made out of radish and some dried shrimp. It kind of looks like a shumai and pulverone had gotten together and it became this. Um, I hope after 648 days of lockdown I didn't remember to rekindle my chopstick skills, which I cannot at this point. Ah, there we go. First bite of the night. Go ahead, Warren. Do it. Yeah, I'm going to start with this. So once again, this is a rice cake with some radish and some uh, dried shrimp. Can't wait to try this out. Mm. That's really pretty good, huh? <laughs> I, I thought there was a cheese inside of this thing, mm. but it's not. It's got that nice little crunch on that outside, that nice outside layer. And then it's nice and chewy. Got some good body there. Mm. Really love that texture the most. Yeah. Mm. So that's our appetizer. And we gotta order some food actually. So off of the menu we go. Next, we were treated to a table side show of how the finishing touches are applied on the Emperor's Flaming Crispy Chicken, which isn't just any old roast chicken because some say that this dish was reserved for the Emperor, and hence the name. This roast chicken was stuffed with machang, glutinous rice and pork stuffed in bamboo leaves. And to render the skin ultra crispy, the chef flambéed a mix of liquors in a saucepan and poured the flaming mix over the chicken before carving. At the time, I was skeptical about the special qualities of this chicken, and in fact, I likened it initially to the already delicious fried chicken at Hop Chan, a Chinese uh, restaurant chain here in the Philippines. That was until I got one more bite and my opinion definitely changed. Let's watch. Yeah, what type of imperador is that? What's in that glutinous rice? Yes, yes it, it has uh, pork inside. Pork? It's pork, yes sir. Mm. Really nice touch. All right, Warren. We're so special that you know this <coughs> flaming, this flaming hot chicken. Well, actually, I don't think it's spicy. that there's a flower. But it takes 40 minutes to prepare, mm -hmm. and we got it within 10. See what kind of magic we do. Anyway, this a is user, a priority is here. Yeah. So this is like, well, we come from a Locos Norte, 648 days lockdown, and we're having chicken again. Mm -hmm. You know, Andox, Chooks to Go, all that stuff. And it's so fitting that we continue eating chicken, everyone. So this here is some really crispy chicken that is flambéed right in front of you. And it, this is stuffed with glutinous rice. 
and some pork. Mm. Now, I see here a beautiful thigh, nice and crispy. We're gonna bite into that later. Ooh, and hot as well. And then a drumstick, because it's the easiest thing to get. <laughs> okay, Warren, go grab your piece. Yeah, I wanna try that. Drumstick, Warren. Yeah. Drumstick, no. Brist. Yes. Brist. And if, and if you smell this right now, it's almost smelling like duck. We almost thought that this was like fried duck. Oh, it's, it's stone. It's very it's aromatic. It's like a lot of like the clove type of smell. Um, definitely a five spice smell we're getting. But more nuanced than that, I believe. Ooh, you're taking the breast meat. Okay. Oh, there's some blood in it. It's a bit <laughs> Warren is still trying to remember his Ilocano. Okay. All right. You can see nice browning all around, like a beautiful golden dark brown color. Yeah, I can't wait for Warren. So, or oh, oh, he's gonna dive right into it. Let's see. Is it chooks to go? Andoks? What? This is what is it? Let's see. Let's see. What is it? Oh. Alright, fish or soup? It's got fish with century egg. Oh, excellent. Oh, it's a chicken. <laughs> oh, it's a chicken. No, it's... Man, look at this. Actually pretty good. But check this, you know, you don't want you to buy it. So describe it for me, Warren, because it kind of tastes like Hopchon fried chicken. Yeah. But he's got no words. He feels like it's be even better than that. Oh. I want to try the skin. Ooh, I got one piece. And I think got that sweetness of the brandy. So it is really different. It's like an upgraded Hop Chan chicken. Given <laughs> a royal treatment. It's very crispy. Mm hmm. It's very oh, it's crispy. crispy guys. Mm. Mm. From that meat. You can feel the crunchiness of it. Mm hmm. And that meat has got so much seasoning. There's like a um, really pronounced saltiness. And yet, that's kind of like prevailing, <coughs> that saltiness, but it's not overbearing. You got like that five spice powder going on. It's like that brandy sweetness that's there as well. Just a little bit, but everything in balance. All right, this is your sort of shalom bap. Oh, yes. Right. Yellow, okay. The yellow one is the crab meat, mm -hmm. the black one is the mushrooms, and the white one is the Shanghai. Ooh, awesome. Thank you so much. And it's flaming hot. <laughs> Just as like flaming hot as the crispy chicken was. It was really good. I need to try that glutinous rice though and really complete that flavor sensation, but I cannot pass up Shaolong Bao. Now, I feel like we need a place to set this in. Or that's not your lid. Okay, it's your plate. Cause of course to capture all that soup. It's in. So this is the regular Shanghai Shaolong Bao. Oh, Warren, I want you to try a Shaolong Bao. Yeah, I'm gonna try the crab, crab. Is it crab one? Try the white one first. That's the regular Shanghai, like classic flavor of Shaolong Bao. It should be like an explosion of like pork soup. But you gotta learn how to eat it. So you dump it liberally in that sauce. That soy ginger this one? sauce. Yeah. Dump it all in there. Yeah. And then yeah. So you wanna put it on a plate that has a little bit of, oh, you know, sides as it were. To capture all the soup that comes out of it because you wanna get that it's soup. Some, that's right. Yeah. There you go. This is a real classic of Shanghai Shanghainese cuisine. Try it. Good Shaolong Bao should have like a nice chewy wrapper, chewy rice wrapper. But then that soup kind of comes on strong, something rich in there. I'm really getting a lot of aromatics in it though. That make it quite special. 
It almost has like a vinegary, vinegary touch there on its own. I'm gonna try the crab meat one next. And this is in the gold here. Again, dump this liberally in this. Soy sauce, ginger, vinegary sauce. And then puncture a hole, just a little bit. Or if you're really adventurous, just take it all in and get some of that hot soup. That's really bursting with crab sweetness. Try this one, Warren. The crab one now. This one? Mm hmm. And then it just finishes like meaty with the crab. And very gentle. With that big hit of crab sweetness. Got no words. Mm. Well, <laughs> that's pretty pretty good. Yeah. That's all I gotta say. Yeah. I mean, it's like really fresh crab sweetness, just a like jolt, and then once you get to the meat, I mean, it just finishes just gentle and dense. Really and like then that you can one. Taste that juiciness of it. Yes, absolutely. What we have here is the mushroom shaolong bao. It's black beauty. Sauce it again, and away we go. That mushroom flavor is really mild. I really love that substantial pork, <clears throat> and those juices just popping out. But yeah, try this one. This is my favorite of the three. Is that really a mushroom? Yeah, but very, very mild, right? Yeah, it's very mild. But it, it's all about that pork. I think there's a little bit combination of kind of just like you know the belly of the bangus. <laughs> okay. Inside in it. What does yeah. that mean? Is that good? Yeah, it's good. But our I'd rather just the yellow one for it. The crab meat? The yeah, crab, crab meat, meat's really yeah. good, isn't it? Okay. Let's have some soup. This is There's some... some your, uh, codfish and century egg soup. Ooh, yeah, there we go. But before that, I'm really excited to try some codfish and century egg soup. You can see here, it's almost got the consistency of like egg drop soup. Hmm? Tofu, there's some little peas in there. And it's parts of the sentry egg, which look like little mushroom flakes. What I'm getting really is that density of the fish. You got good taste, my boy. There's, a, the, there's that nice sweetness from the peas, too. Nice little bit of a crunch, too. The consistency is really nice. Almost like a, a richer egg drop soup. Now, sentry egg, for me, I can taste taste it without tasting too much of like that let you know that off-putting sort of taste it's really nice and balanced and i don't feel that century egg has been drowned out still so i, I love that balance between the meatiness the egginess fish oh yeah so I have here a special fried pork buns or sentien bao. Wow. It's one of the signature mm -hmm. Yeah. popular uh, dim sum in Shanghai. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. And yeah. I'm gonna try these out. They look like oversized Shaolong Bao and Shou Pao put together. The nice fried end there. Mm. So this is a very famous like, you know, Shanghai delicacy and of course this restaurant specializes in Shanghainese cuisine and this is some um, and I hear that the dough here is hand pulled too so it should be like the consistency of like um, a shou pao mixed with a long bao as in there's their little there's a little soupy inside Let's try it out absolutely bursting in juice so I think what you gotta do is puncture it actually because it's just like a big jolt of pork broth goodness 
you can see here, it almost has like an asado type consistency to that pork. And try that again. It's like the best of both worlds. It's like um, okay. pork asado. Here. Pork asado mixed in with like, you know, pork broth from a Shaolong Bao. And then it has that beautiful fried, like, you know, fried texture on the bottom. It's golden brown. And then that soft, pillowy kind of dough of a really good shopao. I love that little hit of green onion too. Adds some freshness. Mm. This is really good. Soup came out. Really, really good. Is it dessert? Mm mm. No. Be careful. <laughs> Oops. What do you say? You, you, sure? gotta, you gotta puncture it. Oh, he's gonna break this first? No. What you do is, like with Chao Long Bao, you add a little hole. Oh, you take a little hole so then you can drink the soup out of it. Oh, okay. man. I slice right in the oh. middle look just to put that sauce in and yeah. now all the soup is out. Yep, sorry about that. <laughs> Next time tell them to put instructions in it. <laughs> this is magical, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's really, really good. Fried. You got that soft pillowy dough. Hand pulled too. And then that inside's almost like um, pork asado. But then mixed with um, pork broth. Like Xiao Long Bao. How's the fish soup? <laughs> really good too. And I'm glad that that century egg is kind of playing nicely in the background, but yet is still prominent in the soup. But I really like that fresh, snappy flavor from the peas. So, as much of a, a supporting cast member as those peas are, they really bring the dish into, you know, really bring that dish into focus. So you gotta try some of that glutinous rice with the pork. Mix it with a bit of chicken. Oh, that's a big... That's a big portion. Now as you would expect, the rice is suffused with the... Five spice and sweetness. Put together though... Mm, it's a magic thing, but look at that skin. Glassy. I think we gotta add some sauce, shall we? I think they have some plum sauce here. I think what looks like plum sauce or hoisin. Try that out. Mm. Mm. Yeah, there's plum sauce. Mm. That's more dimension too. It's that chicken. The chicken, the skin is crunchy. Yeah, like gl glossy, crunchy. Mm, delicious. Try some of this out too. Mm. The sauces really make the chicken too. Oh. <laughs> You really love that chicken, don't you? Yes, sir. I love the texture, love the skin, mm -hmm. everything. Really mm -hmm. like it. Yeah, it's outstanding. Mm. You know what? This is when it's cooled down, it's still crunchy. Yep. Right? Not like other. Yep, chickens. still is. Mm -hmm. Okay, the rest of the dishes. Let me get here some exo fried rice. Yeah. Some really umami stuff, because of course. This stuff is going to be, you know, seafood umami plus, you know, from pork and then all those aromatics in there. This is some chili. That in there. Hmm. And then I have here some mapo dofu. And of course, it's a Sichuan dish. But it's on the menu anyway. And I did feel like something spicy. Oh, that's and this spicy? is with shrimp. Well, yeah, mapu dofu is typically a bit spicy. I got some vegetable too. And soft shell crab. Told you boys, I'm gonna be hungry. Okay. 
They have some of this mapu dofu now. There we go. Right away, I get like the Sichuan peppercorn, but it's a smoky Sichuan peppercorn. So it's very harmonious. It's not like too citrusy. I don't really like mine too <coughs> citrusy. But I feel like a nice earthy back end. Kind of like settle that, you know, acidity down. And there's a nice little mala burst too. Oh, a good? Sure. Right, Hi, this is the fried oyster kaolin. Mm. Mm. Alright. Right. Too full, so I'm gonna just move this out. Sure. Alright, Kaolin oyster. Very food, sir. Thank you. Mm. So our own vegetable dish here again. We have some Thailand. Some nice greens. And some oyster mushroom. I love mushrooms. Big fat mushroom here. Mushroom slice and some Thailand. There we go. A little bit of fried rice, why not? The meaniness of that mushroom pairs off nicely with that big bright Crunchy Taiwan. Ooh. All right. This is your salted egg, soft shell, uh, salted egg shell crabs. Mm -hmm. All right, sir. May I just move your mess? Yeah. Go ahead. Excuse me. Here we go. Soft shell crab with salted egg. Enjoy. Your Thank food. you. <laughs> Wine is like zoned out, and he says that's all. <coughs> yeah. Salted egg soft shell crab. It looks like a funnel cake. Everything looks like funnel cakes to you now. I don't blame you. Then we're gonna try out some EXO fried rice. There's plenty of Chinese sausage, some peas. I'm sure. So I'm really tasty with mommy sauce. I got that pleasant shrimp paste taste out of that rice. Mm. Then there's of course some soft uh, short grain rice. The fish softball. Yeah. I really love that hint of saltiness, savoriness from the shrimp paste and then finishes a little bit spicy. Love it. Now, definitely looking forward to salted egg soft shell crab. There's nothing wrong with that phrase. Ooh, and piping hot too. Big fat piece of soft shell crab with salted egg. That's just some fried eggy goodness. Especially when you got those like crab guts in there, it adds more to the egginess. Very elegant. With just fresh seafood flavor. That just kind of gives into that creaminess and egginess. And you got more of like the salted egg powder, more like than like a sauciness that's adhering to the crab. Tell me what you think about it. <clears throat> that soft shell crab and salted egg. Mm. <laughs> I would say it was crispy. Mm hmm And the inside was fluffy. It feels creamy, doesn't it? Yeah. Nice chunks of meat in there too. Mm. That's really rich. Yes, sir. It's almost as if it's like um a really soft potato, doesn't it? A really soft like crab croquette potato. How do they do this? They take off all the shells. Well, a soft shell crab is just a crab that's not, uh, the shell's not hard enough. Uh -huh. So they're relatively young. Yeah. And so what you get is really like, um, kind of more of an eggy texture. And this one kind of tastes like, like I said, a giant potato croquette with uh, some crab. It sounds really delicious. <laughs> ben is like, Zoning out too. Hey, you better finish this. We can't take it out. Yeah, we can, but yeah, we'll finish all this. I think we can. You yeah, think we can? We can. 
Yes, we can. That's okay. Why, that's why you eat slow. slow. That's why you eat slow. No? This is why you also don't eat lunch. You get small, <laughs> small portion, little by little. Yeah. What do you make of all this so go. far, Warren? Especially on your first big dinner on your first day in Manila. <laughs> first day outside of Ilocos Norte, too. This one. Huh? This one. Huh? I highly recommend this one. <laughs> yeah, he's um, them. It's like the volume of his voice has gone down because he's enjoying himself too much, right? Yeah. So silky smooth, huh? Okay. Back in a bit, we'll try to finish all this if we can. And say, get some dessert, right? Mm -hmm. Dessert? Well, Sounds good, dessert okay. Dessert. Let's chow down. Chow down. All this will be gone, my friends. All will be gone. Okay, everybody, can you believe Warren? Why are speaking Tagalog? You're not going to eat right away. So, all that remains is the rice. Fried rice, that's not bad for man, the three of us. Man versus food? Yeah, man versus food. We didn't exactly win, but, you know, all we have is fried rice that's left over. Yeah. And that piece of chicken breast you cannot eat. But you know what that means? We should get some dessert. That's what they answer, right? Yeah. And send to Ilocos Norte. <laughs> We're gonna have to wait like 10 days. <laughs> okay, back for dessert, guys. All right, everybody, I can't believe it. We have room for dessert, right, Warren? Yes, sir. So, so this room. is um, coconut cream. Coconut cream with some, um, some taro balls. And some. I'm trying to remember what's in it. Coconut cream, taro balls, and mm, something. It's slipping my mind. They say it tastes like panna cotta, and that's the reason why I'm a little stymied as far as for description. There's the dish name. Okay, let's take a healthy scooping of this. There's some desiccated to toasted coconut in this. It kind of has like that. It being the um, put the bong bong taste, kind of. Oh, peach gum. That was what I was trying to say. Peach gum. Um, panna cotta. I'm kind of getting a bit of that taste. Yeah. When I was seeing this on the menu, I thought it would be really dense. Too substantial for a nightcap. But it still feels refreshing to me. It still feels light. Kind of almost like the coconut almost has that little cream cheese kind of um, twang. There's a teensy bit. I don't know if it's my mind playing tricks on me, but that's what it feels like. Yeah, it's like, oh, I got it. It kind of tastes like Maha Blanca a little bit. Is everything to your satisfaction? Yes. Yes. How's the food service? Really good. How's Very the good. Service Very good. It's good to hear. I hope you enjoy the rest of your dinner tonight. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Anyways, we are having the last call for me. Does you might like to pre-order some more food or this oh. one for me before the kids? Oh, they're having this dessert now. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. <laughs> So it almost tastes like, um, what does it taste like to you? It almost tastes like, um, it tastes like, yeah, like puto bong bong. It's like bits of like Maha Blanca in there. And I like that, um, texture. Maha Blanca, like that puto bong bong, desiccated dough coconut. A bit of a bibinka sort of thing. And yet there's kind of a Western component taste about it too. Mm. I really love how velvety that this dessert is. Mm. Not too, not really sweet though, but it's reminding me of a lot of Filipino desserts. Isn't that right, Warren? Yes, sir. Yeah. How do you feel about it? Excellent. Excellent, huh? Yeah. Wow. Well, and it's a good nightcap to kind of wrap things up, right? About we still have, have leftovers. 
We have leftover fried rice. Exo fried rice after all this. All right, guys, there's a little addendum to our Wayan Brasserie Chinoise review. Um, we ordered room service because we're really tired. And it's kind of like a, a perk of staying here at the Hilton Manila. You can order, even though it's not on their menu, on their in-room dining, you can request for this. Um, one of the things I did not get to try was the um, tea smoked duck because we settled upon the chicken. And as you can see, that chicken was, you know, awesome. And I love that presentation too. Um, so tea smoked duck, I mean, this is a traditional um, Shanghainese dish. And it takes a lot of preparation and care to make this particular dish. Um, so, you know, there's marinating, there's some boiling, there's some bit light roasting, there's some frying. And I think this has got to be some plum sauce. Let's just dig that drumstick in here. And you can order a half tea smoked duck instead of a full. A half one, I believe, costs about 1,400 4, 1, pesos. Or more like 1,500, let's say. Because the regular costs closer to 3,000 pesos. Okay, I'm going to have some of this drumstick then. Looks beautiful. Love that tea smoked duck. And this was brought up as room service. And it's quite tender. Mm. And there's a lot of flavor going on too. That tea smoke is relatively gentle too. But what I get a lot of is that smokiness. While tasting the quality of the duck as well. What I could not get enough of well, at the restaurant are these fried pork buns. I mean, the best combination really between fried bun especially at the bottom, and then pillowy soft dough here. And then that inside is like a Shaolong Bao mixed with like pork asado shou pao. It's really wonderful. Cousin Ben really loved the codfish with century egg soup. So that's there for him. And I ordered some dandan noodles. Now, dandan noodles, of course, are not Shanghainese um, fare, but this is a Sichuan specialty, but it was something that I was craving some noodles and I didn't get to try this. And I had their Mapu Dofu, which had quite a lot of zing, kind of acidic, but I'm glad that it had like that roasted quality. So I'm just going to mix this up and then let's give it a try. All right, got that. those dandan noodles all mixed up. You see that sesame paste sauce. I think it's a little bit soupier from what I can see. And then some of those seasonings that are cling on to the noodles. And let's give it a try. To me, it kind of feels like having like a good beefy main. I'm getting like really familiar flavors here. And then cacio e pepe. And I'm like a Chinese take on it. It's kind of weird to say that when you're talking about um, dan dan noodle. But I like the texture of the noodles. And then it was nice like... Pepper flakes, so it's like roasted pepper flakes on here. So it doesn't really, it's not like black pepper or anything like that. But yeah, really quite good. But um, I would prefer mine a little more saucy. Quite good, but I really want more of a luxurious Don Don noodle experience. This tea smoked duck is quite good though. Um, and this is one of their specialties at Wayan. I was kind of really hard pressed because they have this... Off, that awesome chicken dish, of course. And um, I was thinking, only get one poultry dish. And it had to be that. I mean, there's a sh showstopper. And they have this presentation, too, with the tea smoke, I believe. That's what they were explaining to me. But um, I just felt like the chicken was a little more special. So some more of this duck. Which is also really delicious. Let's try as I dip more of that into the sauce, the garlic flavors really come out and lift more of those um, deep um, rooty kind of seasoning into the from that duck. Add a little more dimension. Mm. So I'm gonna enjoy this, and then you know take an hour to read or something, kind of relax, and then off to sleep. And this is our beautiful room here at the Hilton Manila. I'm going to have show you another video on this. So 
Um, back to wrapping up our review on Huayan Brasserie Chinoise at the Hilton Manila. Really good Shanghainese and even some Cantonese and um, Sichuanese cuisine. So back to where we are at the restaurant. So what do you think about your first meal in Manila, Warren? It's like really pretty good. Wow, Warren is very picky. He's learned to be as picky as me. But of course without the exposure. But his first night here in Manila eating real Shanghainese yeah, food Chinese in a restaurant. modern posh ambiance of the Hilton. Right? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. So what do you think? What are your favorite dishes? The crab one with the crab. It's like eating crab potato croquette. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then what else? Um, the chicken. Mhm. Mm he really loved the chicken. And yeah. He loves that fried it. chicken. Yeah. Two of them and and this tea. Mhm. Mm yeah, the double dragon floral tea. And by the way, it really did help us. This is the MVP tonight because. It really helped us to eat almost everything on our plates. Almost everything. Right? So, the more the lesson of the story is drink lots of tea when you're have a, eating a Chinese style banquet. That's that's what you gotta learn. That's the lesson, everybody. The ultimate food lesson of the night. So, that said, Warren, you wanna take it away? Spiel time? Yeah guys, if you like this video. <laughs> Subscribe is free, so what are you waiting for, guys? Subscribe now mm -hmm. for more of our travel and food vlogs. Oh, we got a lot of adventures, don't we? Yeah. When it comes to the food stuff, especially, right? Because we're out of Ilocos Norte, everybody. The leashes are off. We got so many places and so many things to try, right? Yep, yep. So many. Okay. That Where's, about wraps it up for me. <clears throat> huh? Turning out to reality. What? It's it turning out to reality. Yeah, Warren's dreams coming true. It's like <coughs> his first night in Manila. First night out outside, Hyokos Norte. Wow, it's like the whole world expanded onto him, huh? So, there's a lot of adventures with Warren, especially he's trying to remember his Ilocano heritage. He's speaking the language first. Okinana. <laughs> that's right. On that note, that's perfect. Um. Yeah, he heard the guy. So, keep cool, but care. Remember, the Empire never ended, everyone. <laughs>